Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to create a custom form in Django and wrap up this Django for Beginners course. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. The source code for today's tutorial starts where the previous lesson ended, and there's a link in the description that provides the code for each lesson. We've got Visual Studio Code open. Let's go ahead and open a terminal window, as we always do, and then we'll type source, then .venv slash scripts slash activate. Press enter. That should activate our virtual environment. Now let's cd into the My Project folder. And we're ready to begin. Today we'll create a custom form that will add new posts to our application. So let's go ahead and close the terminal. Let's open the My Project directory in the file tree and then the post directory. Now inside this directory we could click on, let's say, views, but we want to create a new file. So I'll click that icon and I'll name this forms.py. So we're not creating this completely from scratch because Django does provide a little bit of information for us. So let's start out with an import and I'll say from Django import forms. Now after that, we also want to say from dot, which means just in the folder that we're in, we want to import models. So this refers to the models folder that we have over here in the file tree. And you can see we have a post class. So this is the model we will be working with. Let's go back to forms.py now and come down a couple of lines. So now let's create a new class. I'll say class and then we'll call this create post. And now this receives forms.model form. And after that we'll put a colon and then we're going to have a nested class inside. Now this name is important. We can't just make up whatever name we want. We need to call this meta with a capital M. Now inside this class, we're going to say the model equals our models.post. That's what we had in our models file over here. So that's what we're setting this model equal to. And after that, we'll say fields. And now we need to specify the fields that we want to inside of this list. So let's look at our models. And really we want the title, body, slug, and the banner. We don't need the date because that will be added automatically as we have auto now add true here also. So we want those other four fields. So we'll put each one of those in our list here. So title, then we had body, then we had slug, and then we had banner. And I put an extra space here out of habit, but I just wanna be consistent. So I'll remove that space. And that's all we need here to create our new form. So now let's move on and we'll go to the views.py inside of the post directory. And now we'll have one additional import at the top. So just under our last import, we'll say from dot, and then we will import forms. So that's the file that we had just created with our new form in it. And now let's scroll down to our posts new function that we have here on line 18 and we'll just add to that. So inside of the function on the first line, we'll say form equals forms dot create post and we'll put the parentheses after that to call it. And now that we have the form, we want to pass it to our render along with the request and the path that we have here. So in this final part of the function that we call, we'll put in form and of course this is going to be the form. So much like we had here above with post, we're just doing the same thing with form inside of our post new. And now this is going to our posts underscore new dot HTML template that we see right here on line 20 now. So let's go to the templates and let's look at the template we had for post underscore new. And right now we just have an H1. So we need to add the form that will be now available to this template. Let's add a line below our H1 and we'll start with the form element. And then I wanna put a class on this and we'll use the same class that we did on our user form. So it's form with validation. And this refers to the CSS that we've created. And of course you can create your own CSS if you want to. After that, we're going to have an action, and let's set this just to empty right now. And after that, we're going to have a method. We'll set this equal to post. And then there's one more thing. I'll press Alt-Z to wrap this down. And that is we might submit an image, our banner. So we need to put ENC type. We'll set that equal to 
multi-part slash form dash data. Now this isn't specific to Django. This is just something in HTML overall when you're sending something that's not just a typical form submission with text. So we're submitting an image. This would be required in any form that we would do that with. And after that, of course, we want to have the closing form tag as well to close that out. Now let's talk about the action up here and we can use our template so we can put in a curly bracket, a percent sign, say it's a URL. Now we can refer to posts and then we want to put new dash post because that's what we had named that. And then of course the closing percentage sign. Now let's go ahead and save this. And just to see what I'm talking about, if we go down in the urls.py here, you can see the name that we have for the named URL is new dash post. And the name of the app is post. So we're going to post and then new dash post. So if we come back up to our template now, we can see how we're referencing that in the URL. It's post and then new dash post. And now we need the contents of the form, which it isn't much, but we'll start off with our cross-site request forgery token. So I'll start typing CSRF and there it is. I'll press tab and it adds it to the body here of the form or inside the form at least. Now I can use our templating language again and pass in the form itself. And that's what we were passing from our function that we had before. So now we're using the form here. We also need a submit button. So we can just make this a button. When there's only one button in a form, it defaults to the type submit. So there is no confusion when we only have this one button. So I can just put a button here, but I also wanna put a class on this button. And if I remember correctly, it is the class form if I have my fingers on the right keys, form dash submit. And then I'm just going to put add post on the button and close this out. And this will submit the form. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Now, if we submit the form right now, we can't expect anything, but let's at least see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal window once again. And now we'll type pi manage.py and run server. That should start our application up. There it is on IP address 127.0.0.1, which is the same as localhost, and then it's port 8000. I'll hold down control, click there. So here we have our application. It looks like I need to log in. Remember from the last lesson, we can't even go to the new post page or new post form now without logging in. So I'm going to click the login, type Dave, and then I had Dave test. I'm now logged in, and now I see the new icon up here, the new emoji. I'll click that. And here is our form. So we've got the title, the body, the slug, and the banner, and then the add post button. Now, one note here, I did modify the CSS from the last lesson just to put a max width on the form of about 600 pixels. You can do whatever you want with your CSS. I'm just letting you know I made a small change if you had the code from the last lesson. So if we put anything in here right now, it won't do anything, but we just wanted to verify that the form did look as we expect it to, and it currently does. Back in VS Code, let's go ahead and close the terminal window. And now we want to scroll down to the views.py file. We're going to add some more logic to our post underscore new function. Now as is, we currently receive the empty form that we create, and it is passed on to the template right here. So we need to handle this logic much like we did the user logic, because this should be a post request. So we're first going to check for that. So we'll say if request.method equals with two equal signs and then capital post. So we're now inside an if statement. Let's handle the else first because the else would be it's a get request and that gives us the empty form that we start with. So let's create an extra line and just say else. And now this would create the form. So we'll just indent that so Python's good. We still have a red squiggly here because we don't have anything up here in the first part of the if. But the else is a get request. So then the form is created and then the return with the render function will send that empty form when we first go to the page. So now what about the post method? So let's handle that. And we'll start off with form is going to equal forms dot 
create post, but now we're going to pass in the request dot post that we receive. We're also going to pass in request dot files, and that's something you hadn't seen before, but we are sending an image file, so we also need that now. And now, as you might remember from our logic with the users, here we can validate what was submitted against the model. So we can say if form dot is underscore valid, and we call that function, then we can do something if it is valid. If it's not valid, it's just going to come down here and return the form, and that form will have the validation essentially showing us what is wrong. So if it is valid, let me put a hashtag here and I'll want to say save, and we're not just going to save the new post, we're actually going to assign a user. So I'll say save with user, but then after that, I'm going to return and we could redirect Anywhere we want to, I'm going to redirect back to the posts and then the named URL list. So we, it looks like we need to import redirect up here at the top and that comes after render on the same line. So now we've got redirect and yes, that looks good. So we've got this much and now we'll be able to submit the form, actually get some validation on it if it's not correct. If it is correct, it's not going to save anything but it will redirect us to the post list. So I'm back in the browser now. Let's go ahead and refresh our form and let's do a test post. Now, again, it will not save the post, but if there is no error, we will get redirected to the post list. So I'm just going to say test post. This is a test post. Say test dash post for the slug. Let's choose a file to add to this and I'm going to choose my ready to go image and everything looks good here. Let's click add post. And it looks like it went as expected. So we see the other posts we had in our list. Now at this point, we're going to change our model because we want to assign a user before we save the post. And if you remember, that takes a couple of steps. It's also going to cause a problem with these posts. So let's go into our admin, say admin slash. Now I'm logged in as the admin user. If you aren't, you need to remember your username and log in then log in and you'll, then you'll see the admin dashboard after you log in as an admin. So now let's go to the posts and let's click up here in the top uh, check mark and it should select all the posts. And then you can choose an action. I'm going to say delete selected posts. It's going to delete all of the posts we had. So I'll click go. It'll ask me if I'm sure and I'll say yes. Now all those posts are gone. If we go back to the site, we shouldn't see any posts on the post list. Back in VS Code, let's go to the models.py file in the post directory. Here we're going to want to add an author for our posts, and the author is going to be the user that's logged in. So let's import the user. We'll say from Django, if I could spell Django, dot contrib, dot auth, dot models, we want to import user with a capital U. After that, we're going to assign an author for our posts. So let's create an extra line here. We'll say author equals. Now this is going to make more sense if you have worked with a relational database before. If not, I'll quickly try to explain how this works, but you have more than one table in your database. So here we have a user table and we have a table that stores the posts. And now these two tables will be related to each other because one user could create many posts, so it will need to link to that user every time he creates or she creates a post. So the author is going to be a foreign key in the post table. And if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, the more you learn about databases, it will. But just for now, know they're related and they are linked, and we're going to call it a foreign key. So I have models dot foreign key, then I'm going to pass in the user, and now I have an on underscore delete that is required. We'll set this equal to models dot cascade. There we see it at the top. And after that, we'll say the default is equal to none. Now that shouldn't happen because we're always going to have a logged in user or a new post can't be created, but we can leave that default in there anyway. This on delete though is required and that's telling the database how to handle uh, your data if this relationship is deleted. And cascade means, okay, if this user gets deleted out of the user table, 
it's going to delete all of their posts out of the post table too, so it doesn't have a broken relationship. And with this change, we can save our model. And now for a mini student challenge. Do you remember what we need to do after we change our model? There's a couple of steps we need to take before we can do anything else. If you remember what that is, go ahead and pause the video and apply those changes. Okay, I'm back and I hope you did well. Here's what we need to do. We need to make migration. So I'm going to control C to exit the server so it's not running now. And now I'm going to say pi manage.py and then make migrations because anytime you change a model, you then need to make migrations and migrate those changes to the database. So we'll go ahead and press enter here after make migrations. Now it's applied those. Now we'll say pi manage.py and then migrate. Now it will apply that migration and now we can run our server. So pi manage.py run server and everything is back up and running with the new changes. Okay, I'm anxious to make some new posts and see the authors for those posts. And to do that, let's close the terminal and let's apply how we're going to see those authors first. In the post list, so the template in posts, that is posts underscore list, let's come down to the line that has the date. And so now we'll have the title above and then we'll have the post date. And after that, I'm going to put by, then I'll use a couple of curly brackets and I'll say post.author because we should now have an author field and close that with a couple of curly brackets. So we should see the date and then by and then the author in the post list so we can identify who wrote which post. Now I almost forgot, but we need to go back and let's apply what we have here in the function so we can actually save the post with the user. So now we can remove this comment that we have and let's start with new post. And this is going to equal our form.save. Now we've seen this before, but here's something you haven't seen yet. We'll say commit equals false. And you need a capital F on that false as well. Then after that, we have an instance of our new post. So then we'll say new post.author. And this is going to equal the request.user because the request has the user that is logged in. And then we're going to say new post dot save, and that will save our new post. With those changes, let's go back to the browser. I'm back in the browser and I'm logged in as Dave. So I'll click home just to make sure everything's working as expected. Now I'll click the new icon and let's create our test post. And this time it should save. So we'll say test post in the body as well. Test dash post for the slug. Choose an image and I'll choose the beach chair and I'll click add post. And now we have our test post in the post list and it gives the date and it says by Dave and there's the body. We can go to the page also. Hey, it looks great. Let me sign out now and I'm going to register a new user. So I'll register here and I'm going to say this username is Mike and then I'll say Mike test for the password, Mike test, submit. Okay, now we have our new user, Mike. Let's create a new post from Mike. So we'll call this Mike's post. Mike made a post, Mike dash post. We'll choose, let's not choose a file. Let's use the fallback. Remember we get a fallback if we don't choose an image. So we'll just not choose one this time. Add the post. Now we have a new post from Mike in our post list also. And we can see who wrote each post in the post list. I can click that. And the fallback image did apply to Mike's post. So everything works as expected. So congratulations, you have a complete working blog app that you built with Django and you have made it through the series. Now I do have one section left in this video where I wanna make a couple of updates and changes. And we're back in VS Code, just a few updates and changes I wanna make specifically to the project settings file. Received a little feedback while making this series and there's a couple of changes that I provided that were actually kind of the old way of doing things, although there's nothing wrong with them and the application is working, it's not broken. I just wanna give the updates. So let's go to the my project directory and the settings.py file. These changes are also going to help you deploy your application if you get ready to deploy it. There's some changes you have to make for static files, for example. So let's go through this. I'm going to scroll down here on line 12. We no longer need to import OS, so we can remove that. 
which will cause us to make some other changes as well. Let's scroll down a little further. Note here on line 25, it says debug equals true, and this is a security warning, don't run with debug turned on in production. So if you're going to deploy, in other words, let's make this false. This way, we also need to specify allowed host. Now you may still run this in your development environment on your local host. So inside of here, let's go ahead and put local host. Let's also put in that IP address you've been seeing, 127.0.0.1, which means the same thing as local host. So we've got both of those in the allowed host now. Now we can scroll down, way down to the bottom of the file where we had defined some things before and we had actually used that OS import. Now you can see VS Code, since we deleted that import, has highlighted where we were using it. So let's go ahead and move our media URL. I'll control X to cut that and I'll put it right under the static URL. We're just kind of organizing the URLs together. We have this static files directories and we're going to change that here in just a second. We also have this media root that we're going to change. I'm going to control X that, put it under these other two. And above this, I also want to create a static underscore root. Now let's set the static root equal to base underscore directory slash, and let's call this folder, we could name it whatever we want to. I'll call it assets. That seems to make sense. They're things that we are going to use. Now, as you see, I just used the base directory without the OS import here. So we can delete this os.path.join, just use the base directory here, delete the comma, put a slash, delete the other parentheses, and it works just like that now. So as you might guess, we can do the same thing here inside of the static files directory. So I'll delete all of this, and I'll delete the comma, and I'll put a slash, and I'll delete that ending parenthesis as well. And now to show how this new assets directory is going to work, I'll delete a couple of these lines while I'm here as well, but let's open up a terminal window. And now I can type clear, so nothing else is there that's confusing. I wanna type pi, manage.py, and then collect stat, ooh, I need to spell that right, collect static. And this is going to collect all of the static assets, and you'll notice it grabs a lot of the static assets for the Django admin area that we've been visiting as well, and it will put them all in that assets directory. So I'm going to press enter, let it collect all of that, and now we'll see that over here. If I close the terminal window, we have this assets directory. Inside, now there's an admin folder, and there's a lot of things here that we didn't create, but they are static assets that Django provides. Then it also grabbed our CSS, and JS that we had provided. Okay, let's save the changes in our settings file, and now let's go to the urls.py file as well. Now I wanna scroll down, and just under this last import, we wanna add one more import, and it's going to be from django.views.static, and not another dot after that, just static. Then we say import serve. So we are importing the serve function here. Now this actually gets used during development as well, and that's okay. It's just another way of doing things. So we're going to make a change here. So we'll scroll down to our URL patterns. Notice we have this URL patterns with the plus equals and it sets our static files. We can comment that out or you could delete it. If you wanna just comment it out so you can refer to it, that's fine too. Now we're also going to have another import here at the top. I need to scroll back up where we import path and include we also want to import RE underscore path, and RE stands for regular expression because we can use regular expressions here in our patterns. So now, instead of the pattern that we commented out here below, I'm going to paste a couple in, and you can see what they look like. I'll press Alt-Z as well. So these are regular expression patterns here. So we're defining a group. Here's the one for media and here's the one for static. If you're not familiar with regular expressions, there's really a lot to learn there. If you are, sometimes they can still be confusing and I usually paste them into something like ChatGPT to say, what exactly is this doing if I don't understand what it's doing? But here you can see it's matching the media path 
This one is matching the static path. It's using that serve function that we imported here and then specifying the document root where we specified the settings and those values that we just set in the settings file. And finally, the last fix I have is just from when we were working with the users templates. So I'll come down here into the users and we'll go into the templates and use the login. And here I just specified the file path slash users slash login, which we could really use our templating language. So we could say URL and it was users colon login. And of course, another percent sign there. And then it would be the same when we do that on register. So I'll change this one here as well. So curly brace percent URL users register a percent sign and Alt-Z to wrap that down. So I've made those changes and we could of course verify those in the URLs that we had one named register and one named login. So here we made the correct name, users login and users register. Of course, in the URLs, we also see the app name is users. Once again, guys, congratulations on completing the Django series. You have a working blog application. If you choose to deploy this application, there are different ways to do it. And you can visit the various hosts for different instructions or Google because it's a little different for each one. So I didn't include that in this video, but there are step-by-step -step instructions in many different blogs and articles out there for deploying a Django application. Congratulations on completing the Django for Beginners tutorial series. Hey guys, giving a quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider and Eldad is a member at the senior level. Also, thank you to all of the junior members. You're all helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's got exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. So please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.